I was at a girlfriend of mine's house one night and we were friends. I was in college and we, I had, we had sons the same age. She had a little three-year-old son named David. I had a little three-year-old son. Hey, son. <laughs> anyway, um, we were hanging out. I, like I said, I was in college and I, we would smoke weed, drink, have fun, dance, act crazy, whatever we wanted to do. We were two young women. Anyway, her boyfriend was over. So, and, and, uh, so they went back into her bedroom and me and my son were going to stay the night. I'm in the living room and there's this guy there. This guy, I don't know his real name, never did. He identified himself as Heads. Anyway, every time I went to my girlfriend's house, this guy Heads would pop up. And it creeped me out to the point where I stopped driving my car to her place. I would catch a taxi. Uh to her place and or a hack because <laughs> we was both broke in college living in the ghetto so i would catch a hack a hack is a you know a, what uber has professionalized people used to just do it back in the day so i would catch a hack over there so he couldn't see my car that way I'd be hoping that he wouldn't show up, but he showed up anyway. So I'm uncomfortable because this guy creeps me out, but I'm too shy to say anything. And so I don't say anything. So he wants to smoke weed with me. And at that time I did not care at all. You know, all weed was welcome as long as there was nothing funny with it. So I smoked a little bit with him and then he um, he wanted to talk, you know, like he was like, come here. He wanted me to come into the kitchen. And when I walked over, when I was walking over to the kitchen, my little three-year-old son comes over to me and, you know, grabs my hand and he's like, Ma, um, can I talk to you for a second? And I go over to talk to my son. And my three-year-old son has this expression on his face. Like, this is the most serious thing. All seriousness. He was like, Ma, we got to go now. So, I that took me completely off guard. I was baffled. My son had never spoken to me with such urgency. And I took it in. I heard him, you know. And so, but the guy heads had asked me to come into the kitchen. So now I figure, you know, I'm just going to go into the kitchen and tell him I have to leave. So he, he wants to try to talk to me. And I hear a voice inside inside me as if it is my very own thoughts but it's not it's it's not me at all it doesn't particularly sound it's like some big booming voice or anything it was a a firm voice <clears throat> a serious voice um, it, it wasn't stern. It was just talking to me plainly. I heard this voice and it said, don't tell the devil where you live, Brandy. <coughs> the voice said, <clears throat> don't tell the devil where you live, Brandy. As soon as I heard that within myself, Heads looked at me and said, 
So where you live at, Wody? I was just like aware, aware and scared at the same time. And I guess he saw the fear in my eyes because <clears throat> I, I looked at him and when I looked into his eyes, it looked like there was something ancient in his eyes. Like I wasn't talking to a person, like I was talking to something much older, something much wiser, um, something with a knowing is the only way that I can describe it. Now that I have a relationship with God and he's taught me a lot of things about demons, a lot of things about a spiritual walk with him, I, I, I know what it is. I can, you can see the demon in people's eyes. <clears throat> so that's what I was seeing. I just didn't know it at that time. So when he said that, immediately I knew I could not tell him where I lived. So I just was like, oh, I live over East. And then he looked at me like, oh, you know, I'm here. And so then he began to try to ask me question after question, trying to entangle me or reach for me spiritually. So I forgot the other couple of questions that he asked because I definitely didn't stay there long. I just, you know, as soon as that happened, I was ready to bounce. So I was like, okay, I have to go. So, um, yeah, I was like, hey, um, uh, I'm so sorry, but I have to leave, you know, me and my son, we, I, I got to take care of something, you know, my son, I, I need to take my son home. Would you mind um, walking up to Park Heights and getting us a cab, please? Because I figured, shoot, if, if we play in this game and, and I'm, it's a demon operating in him, but he still has to abide in this physical body with this man and I can play stupid and just, you know, act like I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to ask, I'm going to play the gentleman card because we were in the ghetto. It was very dark. It was very late at night. Like I said, I had planned on staying the night. And so it was dangerous. So for a woman, well, probably dangerous for anybody in um, Baltimore City, Park Heights. Anyway, uh, I asked him to walk up to get a hack for me and my son. If he was so interested in me, be a gentleman and go do that. So he looked at me with this look on his face. When I tell you that David was mad, it was just like, oh, you. <laughs> but he couldn't say anything. He couldn't say anything, right? Like you got your little evil stinking intentions. And you you faking like a gentleman right now. So you got to keep your character, Mr. Damon. So he left. He walked out the door. And the way that her apartment building was, there was an entrance in the front and there was an entrance in the back. So I made note of which direction that he went and waited, uh, waited a few minutes. And then me and my son quietly went out the other way. So I started walking up to Park Heights because I wasn't going to wait on him to, I never wanted to see that man full of demons again. So we start to walk out of the complex and walk up the hill and I hear the voice again. Well, wait a minute. First, um, as as we're walking up the hill, just me and my son, 
I see my girlfriend's sister walking hard. She's walking fast. She's on the phone. She's like, all right, I'm here. Unlock the door. <laughs> she just getting off from work. And so the Holy Spirit, as I'm walking, I hear the voice again. And the Holy Spirit said, Brandy, the people that live around here don't don't be walking out here at night. It's dangerous. He was like, go to Poopsie's house. Poopsie was my girlfriend's sister. So, and they lived in the very same, exact same apartment complex. Like her sister had a place in there. Her brother had a place in there. She had a place in there. Uh, so anyway, go to Poopsie's house. So I really wasn't on good terms with Poopsie, her family. Like they always looked at me like I was uh stuck up or they thought that I was I was you know bougie or or whatever because I can speak standard English but anyway <laughs> that's just an assumption I have no idea if that's true as a matter of fact I should cut that part out anyway uh I didn't really get along with Poopsie and uh her siblings but you know it was desperate move and I just decided to follow the voice's advice so and I know she's home and I know she's awake just saw her so I follow and uh get to her door knock on the door hi uh it's it's Brandy you know um and her sister is like who is it what do you want <laughs> and uh, even though she could see me through the thing and I could hear them laughing on the other side of the door. So I just, you know, kind of pleaded with them. I was like, hey, it's Brandy. Um, do y'all mind it if um, me and my son stay the night here? Because um, I didn't, I didn't want to stay at Tita's. And so um, they make me stand out there for like, you know, 15 seconds and they like, yeah, you know, you can come in. And so I come into the apartment and there's a lot of people that live there. It's Poopsie, their other sister, I think their mom and her boyfriend was there. And then uh, her sister's child was there. There's a lot of people in there. So I, they was like, well, we don't have, um, you know, a bedroom or whatever for y'all to stay. And I was like, look, right here on the living room floor is fine. We will be fine. And I will, we will get up, you know, um, early in the morning and be out of your hair. We just need a place to crash for the night. Is that okay? And so she said, yes, I was grateful. So me and my son lay down and try to go to sleep. As I'm trying to go to sleep, I feel feel a weight like something sat on my side and I looked and nothing was there nothing was there but I felt this pressure this weight and then I felt it like slowly pressing in I didn't know what in the world was going on. I was not uh, spiritually mature, had not studied the ways of demonic attacks, spirits, nothing like that. I just knew it didn't feel right. It didn't feel good. And so I just uh, was um, thinking in my head, you know, um, Lord Jesus, help me. Um, and then I, I started to think of, uh, every scripture that I could think of to say, like against the devil, like, you know, get away from me, Satan type of thing. And I'm, but I'm doing this in my head because there's a lot of people in there and everybody is trying to sleep. So I'm being shy and I don't want to disturb anybody. So, um, I hear the voice again, but this time the voice is urgent. And it said, girl, you better open your mouth and speak. 
So then I started saying the scriptures that were coming to my mind and um, telling, com uh, telling the devil to get away from me. And like in the name of Jesus, get away from me. And um, and so that's, like I said, I really didn't know anything spiritually at the time. That's all I knew to say. And so I said that. And as I said it, I could feel the pressure lifting until it was off of me and it was away. Right. So then I was like, oh, you know, oh my God, what was that? I don't know. Creepy. So then I'm starting to lull off to sleep again. And again, I start to feel the pressure and something like trying to push its way into me. This time I felt it on my leg. And so I, I said it again, you know, and then again, it's lifted off of me and then it, it was, it was gone. But then I, I realized now I'm scared to death. Okay. I am like, what is going on? You know, like, did some kind of demon follow me from this guy up the street, you know, heads or like, what is going on? I don't know what's going on. This is creeping me out. I don't know what to do. And I'm panicking because I am tired. It's like three o'clock in the morning and I will eventually fall asleep. And so quietly within myself, I started praying and I was like, Holy Spirit, will you please help me? I don't even know what this is that I'm fighting, but you know, Holy Spirit, please help me because I'm going to fall asleep. I can't, I can't stay up all night. I'm, I'm super tired already. And when I fall asleep, whatever it is, it's going to get me if you don't help me. And all of a sudden, I felt this power within me, like this, uh, it was a strong, strong vibration. It was a strong vibration. Like when my heart would beat, it, I could feel it. And then it would get bigger with the next heartbeat. And then it got bigger with the next heartbeat. And then it got bigger with the next heartbeat until it filled me up. And then with the very next heartbeat, I felt power go out of me. I felt whatever that vibration was, whatever frequency that was resonating and building up inside of me, it got bigger than me and it left my body. I could just feel it all, all over my body. I felt it let itself out of me. As soon as that vibration left my body, the whole atmosphere cleared. I didn't realize how loud the atmosphere around me was until there was complete and total and utter silence. Everyone in the house had laid down and was sleeping, but there was all these little noises, these little, just little, little, you, you, you think it like like that it's the house shifting or you know uh just little some things little nothings that it's just you know some little tiny noise that it's not big enough for somebody to be moving around it's really not big enough to to cause you any kind of um suspicion or or that's going to alert you to anything it's just but it was so much of that, that when it became quiet, the silence was deafening. You could have heard a pin drop. 
no joke. That was the first thing that I noticed, that the whole atmosphere cleared. The second thing that I noticed was the profound feeling and presence of peace. I had never felt anything like that before in my life. It was like everything stopped. Like when the Holy Spirit showed out, everything stopped. Everything fleed. Every demon that was in that atmosphere. And when the Holy Spirit let out of me, I realized that Poopsie's place was infested with demons. It was infested with demons. It was like, I couldn't even tell you how full of demons that place was with all the little creaking and the little, all the little noises and things that, you know, the, that the demons were making. It had to be, had to be multiple. And I can't, I have no idea how many, but as soon as the power of the Holy Spirit left my body, every demon flee. Everything is free. <sighs> Once that happened, of course, I fell asleep. I, I, uh, that the peace that was there, it was so comforting that I easily fell asleep. I was already tired. I knew I was safe, and. We got up, left, you know, after we got up the next morning and and left. And and that was that. That is my story of finding out that the Holy Spirit will help you in your time of need with whatever kind of enemy seen or unseen you just gotta ask for the help and do what he says and he will deliver you out of danger and you don't have to be a big church goer you don't have to be doing everything right um the lord jesus christ makes you righteous okay you can't we can't make ourselves righteous the Lord Jesus Christ gave us his righteousness. So it's not up to you to be perfect, um, but it is helpful to definitely know the scriptures in the Bible because they can keep you safe from the devil. When you, when you have the scriptures in you, the Holy Spirit can tell you which scriptures to say when you're under specific attacks um the scriptures tell you how god will heal you through your faith how to use your faith to heal your body god will tell you how to he makes promises to his children of abundance in love abundance in health abundance in wealth abundance in every aspect of your life that's the will of God for his children. Um, so the scriptures are very, very valuable. They are peace against depression. You know, you get depressed, open that Bible up and you just let, start reading where your eyes fall. I bet you that word will speak to you. Um, but that was just an experience that I had when I was young that let me know that God is real and he is more powerful than any demon, a room full of demons that come against you in your life. But if you don't know that, then you will get devoured. The devil roams through the earth like a Roman, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The only people he can devour are the ones that have no clue about Jesus Christ and they don't know their scripture. They don't know the word of God. That's how the devil, you know, uh, that's how you win against the devil. 
when Jesus was attacked by Satan, what did he use? It is written. The word of God. The word of God. It will help you. It will save you. Okay. So that's my story. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed it. Um, don't get creeped out by demons. Take authority over those things. Release Jesus Christ on those things and you be safe. Okay. All right. Get the devil out of your life. <laughs> oh, shoot. I don't want to do it like that. Okay. Let me do it like this. <laughs>